Hello, my name is Poor Nelson with Random Art Attack, and this is homework 5, more GUI effects. This is the last homework in the tutorial series, so you have almost made it. If you've gone through this whole tutorial series, I'm extremely proud of you, as you've probably learned quite a bit. In this last one, we are still learning and we are still growing, but there are cool and difficult things that we get to do today. First, we're going to create different points for the targets. So the harder the target, the more points it's worth. We're going to create three different text styles and animations. So there's cool, cool effects for high points. And the last, we're going to add animations to the display text. So when your score changes, there's an animation to that. All right, let's jump right into Unity. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a different text for these points. So I'm just going to duplicate those points, scroll this over like this. And then whenever I get points, it's going to change this number as opposed to the other one. So I'm going to call this score with a colon there. And then this one, I'm going to move it just a little bit and then move everything just a little bit more like that. And it's going to be the center is the far corner there. So it stays in the corner there. Now the score text, let's change the name to display points. This is what we're going to be changing via code. So let's go to the score manager script and right here, since we already have points displayed, we can delete that. And then let's drag and drop the new display display points into the score text like that. Now, when you start the game, it's going to def default to zero. And then we can affect that without affecting the word score. So let's go to the prefabs folder, click new animation. Let's call this new animation display points. Okay. Now I'm going to drag and drop it to my display points. And then I'm going to create an animator. If we've never used the animator, let's go ahead and discuss this. So I'm going to undock the anim animator right there. You have something that looks like this. You have an entry, which automatically basically comes from the start and goes to whatever. So it's going to go to this display to animations. We don't want it to do that. We actually want to go to an empty state. So right click and you can create empty and then create a transition. So this new entry is going to go to nothing. And now we do want this to transition to the display points earned. And then I also want to make a transition back by right clicking, make transition. So you can create new perimeters to do these transitions. So up here with the perimeters, you can click the plus. You can do floats, ints, booleans, triggers. Triggers are one-time things that after it gets triggered, it's just going to do it once. And so this is what we want. We basically want to trigger this to play a new animation. So I'm going to call this, uh, this trigger scored. So whenever I score, it's going to trigger this. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom this out. You can't zoom in and out on the animator, so that's a little bit hard. So right here, I can change this. I can add the plus right there, go to scored for the condition. And then it has a lot of different options. So I do not want an exit time. I, I don't want to have a transition duration because I want to immediately play. And after it gets triggered, I want to go back to a blank state. So I do have exit time for that. Since this is done playing, then it goes like that. Okay. Don't really want transition duration because that just mixes the two animations. And since this animation is going to play, be over, and go back to its default state, you're good. All right, let's go ahead and pre-dock that. Now I actually need to create this animation. So here I have the animation at, with the display points selected. Go 10 frames or so. And then let's have it move up like it's bouncing. Change colors to just anything you want. I'm going to do it gold. And I'm just going to copy and paste. So control C, control V. And it just bumps right back down. So we have this new animation. Nothing fancy. <laughs> So now I need to access this by script by going to the score manager, double clicking that. And while here, I'm going to go to create two new things. I'm going to go ahead and go public animator, because I'm going to reference the animator. I'm going to call it anim. You can call it anything you want, obviously. And we already have the update score changed. In the point tractor, we're going to go score manager dot instance 
dot anim. And so we're referencing this animator. And then I'm going to say set trigger. We call this score. And it just basically triggers it as soon as you do that. If it was a Boolean, you'd have to do, you'd say the, the Boolean's name and then false or true. If it was an int, you'd actually set that equal to a score. But a trigger, you just basically set that function and it triggers it. Very cool stuff. So it finds this anim, it's an instance, it triggers it. Now I'm also going to say score text dot get components animator. And so it's going to find this animator. So I don't have to drag it and put it in there. And I'm going to say anim equals this. Let's go ahead and compile this. Go ahead and see how this works in game. Okay, so I'm going to hit play here. Okay, so I'm going to enlarge this here. The score is zero, so that's that's looking good. And did you see that? Now there's a bug going on. It keeps playing this over and over. It's like looping it. But look up at the very top at our score, how it bounces. Sometimes when you play around with things, uh, bugs are discovered, and that's a good thing, so we're going to be able to find that. Just thinking about what I need to do here for a second. So I found the uh, error. What it was, the score text had a loop animation, so you want to turn that off. That's why I was just keep on going up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, I have an impact text um, default prefab, and I want a duplicate of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just control C, control V, and now I have this duplicate. Okay, I'm going to add the different uh, effects to this one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one and call this impact text one. And that's fine. Yeah, we can just leave it like that. So what I want to do is I actually want to, let's look at this, create animation. And I'm going to call this, and naming these things is always the hardest thing for me. Uh, score effect, nah, point. I, oh, let's let's name it the exact same thing as the old old one. So just display points two. So we already have display points one. So I'm going to delete the animator off the second prefab that we're making, and we're going to drag this display points two onto the text. And now I have display points two, and so I can create that. So I'm going to zoom out quite a bit here, try and go to about 20 frames. So right about there, okay going to grab this text, pull it up. So I want to go up and fade out. So this is going to be the movement. So it goes to the color. Let's do like a purple color like that. And so then as it scrolls up, we want to fade out. So we can change the color a little bit and then change the opacity down to zero. So it'll fade out like that. And then if you really want to, you can actually put another keyframe, change the opacity up to 100%, and then change this opacity down to zero so it starts invisible, it quickly becomes visible, and then fades out, just like that. It's not looped, and so we're good there. We have a simple, so a, a different impact text animation. Let's go ahead and make the third one, copy that one, do the same things. So grab the text portion, delete the animator, want it to probably be a dull gray. So this is for the lowest points possible. Okay, and so let's go ahead and create another animation. You can do it two ways. You can right click and create animation, or we could, with the text selected, just hit new animation on the animation window. So let's drag and drop this to the text. So now that's applied to the text. And so up to uh, over the course of the light, I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna do 60 seconds, because I don't know if 20 seconds is too fast basically doing the same thing, having it go up, fade out, and then when it starts, it's actually invisible, fades in, then fades out, just like that. And I don't know if that's going to be too slow. I kind of need it to see it in game. So now I want to create these as prefabs. So I'm going to drag and drop these into my prefabs folder. All right, save these. If I go open scene, and then I'm going to just go to this target here. I'm going to go close. And so these different effects, this first area, I want the bullseye to kind of have this gold effect. So, oh, actually, yeah, just the impact text one there. And then for the rest, I'm going to do that boring gray stuff. So impact text two. So it's actually going to be purple in the middle, gold on uh, gray on the outside. We want the gold for something really hard. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. This one's going to be a farther away target. Okay. 
this is going to be really hard, so I'm going to make this worth 100 points. This one, about 75 points. This one, 55, 25, and then like 15 or something like that. So this center, we want to be gold, so we do the impact text for the impact prefab. For these two, I want that purple text, so it's impact text one. There we go. And then these two, I want it to be just the boring gray so I can leave it. Now let's go ahead and test this out and see if it works. So the gray's cool, love it. And it looks like that purple text isn't working. The gold's working, the gray's good, the blue's not good, so let's problem solve there. So, oh, it's because this is disabled for whatever reason. So <laughs> my prefab was disabled. Let's go ahead and do that again. That's the gold, there's the purple, it's going way too fast. And so we can go back and we can fix that in animation. I really like the gray, I think it was 60 frames, so maybe we just try and change that to 60 frames as well. And that's looking really good. Yep. So you can do that for the different targets, and and the more difficult, you can change it that way. That's pretty much it for the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and just set up my scene here for the, the, the rest of it. You're more than welcome to watch it. It's been a pleasure making these, and I hope you've enjoyed them. If you have any comments, please leave those in the comments below, and give us a thumbs up. It helps get these videos noticed.